Hello class and welcome to unit 4 video 1. Today we're going to go ahead and look at graphing quadratic functions um, and you're going to want to have your graphing calculator along today so if you don't have it go ahead and grab it and then come back to the video um, and your learning targets for today. I can graph quadratic functions using the y-intercept, the vertex, and its axis of symmetry. That's the first learning target. The second learning target is I can find and interpret the maximum and minimum values of a quadratic function in real-world problems. So let's just go ahead and look at a real-world real world problem right away that uses a quadratic. Okay, We have rock ma music managers handle publicity and other business issues for the artists they manage. One group's manager has found that based on past concerts, the predicted income for our performance is P of X equals negative 50 X squared plus 4,000 X minus 7,500, where X is a predicted price per ticket in dollars. We want to know what happens to the income as the ticket price rises. Okay, So one thing that we want to look at first of all is the actual equation. Notice how it has an x squared and an x. This x squared term is what tells us that it's a quadratic. Okay, as soon as you see that the highest degree, so the highest exponent is a, is a 2, okay, you know that it's a quadratic. So we have something x squared, that's a quadratic. Graphically, that looks like a parabola, either opening upward or downward. Okay, so remember that u shape, they're called parabolas, it's also a quadratic function. Okay, so we want to look at what happens to the income as the prices rise. So here is our function graphed below. Okay, so what happens to the income? Well, as our prices rise, so look at we're at 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, so as we go this direction, uh, the ticket prices rises, the income rises until a certain point. If I get here, then if I look, my income starts decreasing. So what happens to the income as the ticket prices rise? Well, the income increases until $40 a ticket, so per ticket. Then the income, what happens to the income? Well, once I get to that $40 and above, it starts to decrease. Then the income decreases. So this tells the uh, manager that we want to keep tickets around $40 a ticket to maximize our income. Okay. So let's go ahead and just look at quadratic functions. Some parts that we need to remember. Okay. So it's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c um, and it's where a cannot be 0. The reason a can't be 0 is if I plug in 0 for a, 0 times x squared I would, would just leave me 0 plus bx plus c. Now my highest term is x. Okay, well that's a linear then. So that's why a cannot be 0. So something to keep in mind, okay, it has to have that x squared term. So some things that we want to know. The y-intercept, okay, that's c in our equation. Okay, so our y-intercept is c. Another way to always find your y-intercept is that is when, well let's look at it, Here's my x. It's when x is 0. So you find your y-intercept by letting x equals 0, and then you solve for y. That will also give you your y-intercept. Okay. Another important thing is that you need to have your axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is op, um, negative b over 2a. This is an equation you're going to need to know. That's how you find the axis of symmetry. So your b is right here, and your a is here. So you're using those values to find your axis of symmetry. The last key important point will be your vertex. Okay. Your vertex. So the way you find it, if you notice your axis of symmetry is right here on your vertex. Okay. So the vertex is really going to be you take your axis of symmetry, plug it into your equation to get your y value. So the x coordinate of the vertex of the vertex is x equals negative, whoops, run out of room, negative b over 2a. Okay, once you have that value, that's your x value. So if you have your ordered pair, this is your x value. Then to get your y value, you plug this x into the function. So, so this is like step one, then step two, plug x into function to get y.
algebra into function to get y. And that's how you get your vertex. So those are the most important things that you're going to need in order to graph today. Okay, so y-intercept, your vertex, and your axis of symmetry. All right, some other things that are important. When we have our quadratic function, remember the form of a quadratic is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. If your a, the number in front of the x squared, is a positive, the graph opens up. So if we have a positive a, it opens up, and we have a minimum, okay? Since we're opening up, this is my lowest point minimum. If a is negative, so the number in front of your x squared is a negative number, then you're going to open downward and you have a maximum, okay? So some important things to remember. Now, let's go ahead and actually do this. Let's find the following and then graph. So we need to find the y-intercept, the vertex, and the axis of symmetry. So first thing, y-intercept, it is your c value, Okay, um, or the other way you can find it is when x is equal to 0. So you could plug in 0. If I plug in 0 here and 0 here, those are 0, so I'm left with 3. So it's an ordered pair, 0, 3. Your vertex, okay, well, that's going to come after we find our axis of symmetry. So let's find the axis of symmetry first. So axis of symmetry. Remember the way we find that is x is equal to negative b over 2a. So looking at here, my a is equal to 1, my b is equal to negative 6, and my c, I'm just going to write down, is equal to 3. So to find the axis of symmetry, x will equal negative b, which is negative 6, over 2 times a, 1. If I have a negative negative, we know that's going to be plus, so I have 6 over 2, which is 3. So x is equal to 3. Notice, axis of symmetry is a line. We, you must write it as x equals 3, or I will take off points on your quizzes. So please make sure you write it as that. Okay. So now that I have my axis of symmetry, I know my x value is 3. Now to figure out this piece, I plug 3 into my equation. Okay. So to figure out my vertex, I'm taking and plugging that 3 into g of x. So it's g of 3 is equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. 3 squared is 9. 6 times 3 is 18, so minus 18 plus 3. 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 3 will give me negative 6. So when I plugged in 3, I got out negative 6. So my ordered pair is negative 3, or sorry, 3, negative 6. Now all I have to do is graph. Okay, first thing I like to put on there is the axis of symmetry. Um, it means everything is symmetric across it. And we always put it on as a dashed line. And please be sure to label. So this is x equals 3. Okay. The next thing I'm going to put is my y-intercept. So I have the ordered pair 0, 3. And then I have my vertex 3, negative 6 right here. Okay. I need to have at least three points to graph. So this line tells me everything is symmetric across it. So I can just take this and figure out where it should be over here. So we are 1, 2, 3 away from here. So 1, 2, 3. Here's another point. And I do my very best to sketch myself a parabola. It's a little easier on paper than on the computer screen, but okay, do your best to go through those. Make it a U, not a V shape. Okay, that is example one. Um, if you have any questions on how to do this, please write it down and then ask me um, when you have a second. Example two, very similar to the one we just did. So I would really like for you to pause the video and do this one on your own. Hopefully you had a second to pause the video um, and do the problem on your own, but if not, here you go. We're going to go ahead and find the y-intercept, the vertex, and the axis of symmetry. First thing we're going to do is the y-intercept. Remember that's always when x is 0, um, and if I plug in 0 to this problem, these are all 0, so I'm left with 2, which is also another reason that your y-intercept is always c. Okay, so there's my y-intercept. Next thing I'm going to do is my axis of symmetry. Remember, I need to do x equals negative b over 2a. So my b in this case is negative 8. <clears throat> so I would have negative, negative 8 
all over 2 times my a, which is 4 in this case. So I have x equals positive 8, 2 times 4 is 8, over 8. So x is equal to 1. So I would write my axis symmetry as x equals 1. Once again, don't forget to write the x equals. That's important. Then the last thing I need to do is figure out my vertex. Remember, your vertex starts with 1, whatever your axis of symmetry is, and you plug that into your equation to get out your y. So we need to find f of 1 when I plug in 1. So I would have 4 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 2. So 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4. 8 times 1 is 1, so minus 8 plus 2. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So I have the order pair 1, negative 2. So let's go ahead and graph it. Like I said, let's put the axis symmetry on first. It's a dashed line. And label it as x equals 1. Now let's go ahead and put our y-intercept, 0, 2. And remember, it's symmetric, so I'm going to put it on the other side, too. So we have 2, 2. And then my vertex is 1, negative 2. And then we do our very best to sketch out a U-shaped parabola, not a V-shaped. Ah. And there you go. There is your parabola for example two. Okay. So if you have any questions on graphing quadratics, this is how you would do them. Um, otherwise, we're going to move on to finding min and max. Um, if you would also like a break, now would be a great time to take a break. So looking at example three. An object is fired straight up from the top of a 200-foot tower at a velocity of 80 feet per second. The height, h of t, of the object t seconds after it is fired is given by h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 80 t plus 200. It says find the maximum height reached by the object and the time that the height is reached. Okay. So first things first. They say 200 from the top of a 200 foot tower. Look at where the 200 is. It's already in our equation. Velocity is represented right here. Okay, so biggest thing to remember, h of t is representing our height. And our t's here are representing time. Okay, so the 280 are already in the equations. They're this, just there trying to trick you. So you want to find the maximum height. Well, if we go back to earlier in our notes, if I had a maximum, that right here, if I had a max, that meant that my a term was negative. Okay, so if you look at the equation that we have for this problem, is my a term negative? Yes, it is. So that means that it's an open down parabola. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that problem. Okay, so I know that this parabola opens downward. And I want to find the maximum height. Well, the maximum height will be here. What else is that point? What is that? That is the vertex. So really all we need to find is the vertex. Okay, so first thing to find the vertex is find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so let's find the axis of symmetry for this one. So x equals negative b, so negative 80, over 2 times my a, which is negative 16. So I have negative 80. 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. So x is equal to, if I divide those out, 2.5 seconds. Okay, because that's it's really t in this case, sorry. So this is starting out, it's 2.5, and now I need to actually figure out the height. Okay, so I plug this in to figure out my y value of my vertex. So I have h of 2.5 is equal to negative 16 times 2.5 squared plus 80 times 2.5 plus 200. Okay, so h of 2.5 will equal 2.5 squared times negative 16. We'll give you a negative 100. 80 times 2.5, this is a negative 100. You can do this on your calculator, guys. So negative 100 plus 80 times 2.5 is 200 plus the 200 from before. So negative 100 plus 200 is 100. 100 plus 200 is 300. So my ordered pair is 2.5, 300. So I want to find the height. 
Well, the maximum height is at 2.5 seconds and the maximum height is 300 feet. So my answer is, I wrote 3,000 here, sorry, should be 300. So the max height is 300 feet. That is the answer to problem three. Okay, if you have any questions, once again, please let me know. Write them down and ask when you have a second. Moving on to problem four. Libby throws a ball in the air with a velocity of 64 feet per second. She releases the ball five feet above the ground. The height of the ball above the ground t seconds after it is released is modeled by an equation of this form. So if you look at the form now, we're missing some letters. We're missing V sub O and H sub O. It says V sub O is the initial velocity. Well, where was my velocity? It's 64. So I'm going to plug that in. Also, it tells me um, the H sub O is the height at which the ball is released. She releases the ball five feet. So this is my height. Okay, so then it says find the max height that the ball reaches and the time that the height is reached at. So let's just plug in so we have our whole equation. So h of t will equal negative 16 t squared plus my velocity is 64, so 64 t plus my h sub o, my height is 5 feet. Okay, so there is my equation. Now, looking at this one, does it open up or does it open down? My a is negative, which means that it opens downward. So do I have a maximum? Yes. Once again, how do I find my maximum? I need to know my vertex. Okay, so let's find my vertex. Um, so axis of symmetry, negative B, so negative 64, over 2 times my A, negative 16. So I have negative 64 over negative 32, which gives you 2. So I used x because that's how the equation is, but look at what variable they're really using. They're using t. So t equals 2. So this tells me my time is at 2 seconds. So at what time? At 2 seconds, it's going to be at its max height. We need to figure out the max height as well. So we know it's 2 comma, we don't know. So the way I figure out, well, how high does it go? I plug 2 into my equation. So I have h of 2 is equal to negative 16 times 2 squared plus 64 times 2 plus 5. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 16 is negative 64. 64 times 2 is 128 plus 5. Negative 64 plus 128 plus 5 will leave you with 69. So we need to answer our equation. So at the max is at the ordered pair 2, 69. So find the max height that the ball reaches and the time. So the max height so max height is 69, and I would look what way are they labeling it, feet, 69 feet at, and it happens at 2 seconds. That's how I would answer my question. Okay. All right, so that is the end of Unit 4, Video 1. If you have any questions on quadratic, like I said, please write them down, come and ask me. Um, otherwise, have a great day.